welcome to epg patshala dear students today we would be learning the module uh, on uh, history of town planning the post industrialization phase starting from the post industrialization phase the learning objectives of these this module is the industrialization phase and the planning theories which came uh, and due to these planning theories how towns developed so now we see that the post colonial rule uh, we had this industrial revolution which brought in drastic changes in the uh, settlement patterns and the land uses and the changes necessitated interventions through public utilities as essential and inseparable part of settlement livability the industrialization phase from the 17th to the 19th century brought in lot of inventions technological upgradation and technological advancements and if we see the how it's defined we see that the rapid development of industry of industry that occurred in britain in the late 18th and 19th centuries brought about by the introduction of machinery it was characterized by the use of steam power the growth of factories and the mass production of manufactured goods it took place on a wide scale in the country and uh, or a region and england and france saw the onslaught of industrial revolution over medieval towns like paris london manchester and liverpool factories became the focal points and they started acting like magnets and people or residential areas came up surround these factories as they were the foc um, focal points for employment opportunities and uh, if you see this table it shows that uh, what were the inter uh, inventions over a period of time uh, starting from steam engine to underground railways we see that they have an impact that means in terms of growth of industries in terms of economic leadership in terms of increase in the employment then uh, congestion so there were both positive as well as negative impacts of these inventions and the developments which took place thereof now if we see the implications of the socio economic implications of industrial revolution we see that there are distinct changes which and these changes were that there were class based stratification came up rather than caste based and the rise of the middle the middle class took place there was also increase in population concentration near crowded factory uh, near crowd, uh, rather near crowded factories there were industrial towns which came up then uh, increase in industrial workers but at the same time there was though there was employment opportunities opportunities but at the same time there was lack of facilities infrastructure no provision of shelter and ultimately resulted in a poor quality of life so the with the pros and cons of industrialization uh, over a period of time with the objective of providing better quality of life to people because of diseases in fact rather because of this that's of this this situation uh, diseases or the health was getting affected of people and that therefore with the purpose of providing people with improved quality of life uh, robert owen who was an industrialist in england he in 1816 proposed a plan for a community with the purpose of making healthy living for a healthy living for the industrial workers and he proposed a plan 
with an area of 5200 acres uh, and uh, then he with a population of 1200 and it was self sustaining with open spaces around the community and he put forth the idea of a cooperative community combining industry and agriculture then with this as the beginning post industrial phase theories came up various planning theories came up and as i quote the britannica which says that the modern origins of urban planning lie in a social movement for urban reform that arose in the latter part of the 19th century as a reaction against the disorder of the industrial city. Many visionaries of the period sought an ideal city, yet practical considerations of adequate sanitation, movement of goods and people and provision of amenities drove the desire for planning. Contem contemporary planners seek to balance the conflicting demands of social equity, economic growth, environmental sensitivity and aesthetic appeal. So there were the demands of social equity, of environmental sensitivity, of economic growth, aesthetic appeal, all had to be achieved. And they were, at some points they were conflicting there were conflicts and so therefore uh, the result of this planning process may be a formal master plan for an entire city or metropolitan area, a neighborhood plan, a project plan or a set of policy alternatives. So generally we, um, any of these can be used to, to achieve the objectives. The revolution necessitated interventions uh, through improvement in public utilities that is uh, improved ventilation, uh, provision of potable water, safe disposal of liquid and solid waste, fire safety measures, drained lands and green lungs all had to be provided and you can see the in these pictures the streets of uh, New York or areas in France and uh, the homelessness all in the 19th century the status or the, you can understand the quality of living uh, in this part uh, or in this time uh, so therefore we see that uh, new new theories came up the theories so there was sanitary reforms and public health improvement measures and these new theories which came up was started with the City Beautiful movement and the City Beautiful movement was started by uh, Robert Owen. Uh, America was the first to come out of the colonial rule and face the industrialization phase and therefore the various theories started from this region, the reforms related to public utilities and public health uh, because all these all these uh, problems or the industrialization led to um, health problems and that's how uh, all the services, facilities uh, were provided uh, or the endeavor was there to provide all these facilities and services to improve the quality of health and the quality of and the resulting quality of life of people. Now in the United States of America uh, you can see the years 1797 where a society for bettering housing conditions for the poor were was formed and then there was this tenement house act to improve locust housing so all the uh, and then uh, we have washington sanitary housing company which started massive housing programs in the united kingdom uh, in 1848 we had the first public health act passed and then we, there was this British housing law which empowered the state and local authorities. So what we can see is that uh, these reforms or these changes were backed by legislations and these legislations helped to overcome uh, or when it became mandatory to overcome 
then uh, people started uh, the changes started to come and either through policies or through plans the changes started to come so now uh, with the these uh, post industrialization the the uh, the need which it triggered of for better living uh, started with the city beautiful movement and the city beautiful movement was initiated by uh, daniel hudson burnham now there was a world fair in chicago uh, in 1893 with the purpose to make people aware of the effects that the industries or the factories were having on urban life and with the theme of make no little plans and therefore the city beautiful movement was advocated by uh, as we said daniel hudson burnham who was an american ar architect and urban designer who made the initial layout plan of chicago but there were criticisms to this plan in the sense that uh, it was said that the plans were not uh, to human proportion and the idea of cities as economic uh, growth centers or commercial centers were not considered this city beautiful movement was followed by the garden city approach and uh, or the concept and the resultant new towns in 1898 now out of all the concepts and theories one of the concept which was accepted by all was the garden city concept ebenezer howard he uh, in his book tomorrow a peaceful path to real reform which later was published as garden cities of tomorrow so there were subtle attempts to deal with the uh, growing crisis of cities but and this concept which came to know, be known as the garden city or the town planning movement uh, as this was the most accepted of all now uh, the howards concept which came up brought in new towns but before that before discussing the new towns let us understand what was howard's concept ebenezer howard's concept he demonstrated his ideas of garden cities into three magnets one was the town magnet that is town is pulling people so there are attractions in the town and the country magnet from where people are um, would be coming to the cities and what is happening to the country uh, side and the last is the town and country magnet so the town has its good points or advantages the country has its advantages so garden cities included the attractions of a town as well as attractions of a countryside so as to bring together economic advantages of a town with clean lifestyle of countryside so the attractions of the town which was employment opportunities was coupled with the good life or the unpolluted life style of the countryside now coming to the Hmm. concept if you see this drawing it is there was a it was planned on a concentric pattern that is broad rings of vegetation open spaces public parks broken by six radial boulevards and canals extending from the center connecting the city to its nearby towns and the garden city was also conceived as a clustered city with multiple town centers each with population under 5000 people and as economically interrelated centers where individuals would eat food food produced in the agricultural land within the city and work in their own center now what was the information or the assumption so, while making this garden city making this concept or theory the area was about 6000 acres site out of that 
thousand acres were home or residential development for 30,000 people and the rest 5,000 acres was retained for agriculture and was home to about 2,000 people with pastures, farmlands and welfare services around the central city. The garden city uh, between the central city, main city and the agglomeration uh, was about 10 kilometers and uh, when we look at the cities which came up due to this garden city approach, we see that Lechworth, Welwyn were these two cities which represented the or which came as garden city, resulted new towns based on garden cities. And uh, Lechworth was the first garden city which evolved out of Howard's principles and it was designed by Raymond Un Unwin and Barry Parker in 1903 and the second one was to uh, was Welwyn Garden City designed by Louis de Soissons and Frederick Osborne in 1920s. Letchworth is a town in Hertfordshire, England, 35 miles from London. You see on the map it is shown. And it was designed by Raymond Unwin and Barry Parker for a population of 35,000 and area of about 15 nearly 1550 hectares approximately with a reserved green belt of 526 hectares. Now in Letchworth came in 1907. Now in 30 years time Letchworth grew and an additional 15,000 population and 150 shops and industries came in and led to varied problems. You can see from the pictures the plan of Letchworth and the location of Letchworth. Now coming down to the Welwyn Garden City in 1920, which is a town within the borough of Welwyn in Herefordshire, England, 19 miles from King's Cross and 24 miles from London and built by Welwyn Garden City Limited, a company formed to plan and build the garden city. It was chaired by Sir Theodore Chambers and Louis de Sonsos as architect and town planner. So Welwyn was um, designed for a maximum of 40,000 people and with a land area of about 1,000 hectares and it was designed in 1920 and in 15 years that is after the world war second world war war about 10000 people and nearly 50 shops and industries got added to this uh, city which created which brought in the problems of or created varied problems now what were the components of this new town what did it include? The town included residential areas, that is places of stay, schools for education, open spaces, large scale open and green spaces uh, which, have both, which had both uh, passive part, that is interior parks uh, and it had also the active parts. Which, uh, which were swimming pools, tennis courts, um, plazas, outdoor basketball courts. And it had also community centers which housed administrative offices, library, gymnasium, club room, and service and maintenance areas. The streets were designed so as to give the concept of a neighborhood unit and the pedestrian walkways were separated from the main roads. As you can see in this figure or in this image, the layout of Welwyn city 
and the greenery of Welwyn city. Uh, at the same time, the, the buildings which houses um, various facilities and uh, so therefore uh, Welwyn uh, was a case or was a result in Newtown. Dear students, today we have learnt the negative implications of industrialization uh, and how it triggered off the need for planning on new approaches or new theories of planning and uh, which resulted in new towns and um, in order to overcome the conflicting demands of uh, social equity, environmental um, uh, sensitivity, economic growth and uh, aesthetic uh, sense uh, for cities. Thank you.